welcome to video number eight in a series I'm doing on a parts caster that is a Telecaster. Here's the guitar to give you an overview. Of course, this is also the guitar I was playing in the beginning of the video. And as I'm talking, I'll show you some close-up videos of the guitar as well. In this video, we're gonna be talking about tuner installation. And I'm not talking about replacing tuners, I'm talking about installing tuners for the first time. In other words, we're talking about a headstock that has nothing but holes in it, and you have to go in and install the ferrules or the bushings in order to accept the shaft of the tuners. And we're also talking about drilling holes in the back of the headstock in order to hold the tuners in place. Now there are different sort of levels of parts caster building. You could go out and cut a tree down and shape the wood yourself from the body to the neck. You could buy a raw piece of wood in the thickness that you are looking for and shape it from there. You could buy an already shaped body and neck and finish it with the color of your choice and the clear coat. There's just the sky's the limit with the amounts of options that you have with parts caster building, which is the great part about it. In my case with this Telecaster, I started off with a completed road worn Telecaster body, just the body, and then I bought a neck to my specifications from MusicCraft. And briefly, the reason why I bought a different neck was because the road worn Telecaster neck originally comes with a seven and a quarter inch radius and is not finished in nitrocellulose. So those are two things that I wanted to change. This Telecaster actually only weighs six and a half pounds, which is what I was going for. I wanted it to be as light as possible. And while we're talking about tuners, I will let you know that I weigh the tuners that I have, and they weighed about 5.6 ounces. So that's the amount that is contributing to the overall weight of the guitar. That's not gonna be the same for every type of tuner out there, but it's gonna be probably typical. I have lots of videos out there on this guitar, and I will be making more. To give you a quick rundown, video number one was just an overview on the project. Video number two was focused on the neck details. Number three focused on reshaping the walnut truss rod plug at the headstock of the guitar. Number four focused on some fretwork in preparation for finishing the neck. Number five was about slightly reshaping the headstock. Number six was details on actually finishing the neck in nitrocellulose and nitrocellulose tint. And video number seven was on installing the decal. All right, without further ado, let's get into installing the tuners. Okay, so it's tuner time now, and I don't know if you can see this, but I already have a little bit of chip out around these holes where the tuner bushings go. So I'll tell you how that happened, and I'll tell you my method, and I'll tell you sort of what you can do to maybe mitigate that. So what happens is when you spray the nitrocellulose or polyurethane, whatever it may be that you're coating with, if you think of like surface tension of water in a cup, as it gets to the top of the cup, there's like a sort of bubble or a dome that forms. Same thing with these holes. So the nitro in my case kind of makes a little dome around the holes of the wood. And so if you're gonna wet sand and get this perfectly like new, then those domed areas around the holes would probably be leveled out and you wouldn't have to worry about that. In my case, I really didn't care about that too much and I wanted a pretty thin coat. So those areas did exist. And so what I did, when I did my strat, I didn't have this tool, but this is a reamer, a cheapo reamer from Harbor Freight. There's a guy that I mentioned a couple times in my strat series. He had his own series of videos about building a parts caster strat or putting one together. And I believe his username is SMB Stress Fest, if I'm not messing that up. But anyway, uh, he had a lot of videos out there and that was a big help in my project. What he did not do is any sort of relicking of his strat. It was all, you know, brand new stuff. So that was kind of where I added on and extended what he did in his videos and so of course you can go check those out on my channel if you want to but anyway um, I've seen this with his videos I've seen uh, Stuart McDonald do this as well where they sort of widen these holes to get ready to accept the tuner bushings or ferrules when I first tried to put these in they would not even go in the holes they just kind of set on top and I have worked on these already as you can see but when I first started I thought hey the, the reamer is the way to go now you could also use a rat tail file which is a, just a, a kind of a thick diameter file with a rough edge all the way around but for my situation I went with the reamer and I started going at it and as I did I pretty immediately started seeing a little bit of chipping out so I backed off from that and I realized what was happening and so I went to my old standby way of rolling up some 150 grit sandpaper and inserting it into the whole area and started rubbing it around but what I found out is what I needed to do is kind of insert it in and sort of go in this fashion here not necessarily exactly like that but sort of go around the edges as I'm spinning it to 
go ahead and try to clear some of that nitro out and do it in a way that sort of, you know, gets it to where it, it's smoothed out instead of chipping out. And this sandpaper is a little bit old now, so it's got some particles coming off of it. That's not necessarily the chipping out. I think I've mitigated that. Anyway, so what I found is what I need to do is sort of get that, really focus on getting that nitro away from the whole edge so that I could ream the hole. And then as I reamed, I wasn't necessarily pushing back on the nitro or causing that clear coat to to make the bubble expand and crack out. So I do have some, some chipping away, but I've already inserted these bushings into the holes in the wood and they actually cover that up. So despite my almost freak out about, you know, just imagining having to go back and somehow touch up these areas with some kind of tent coat, thankfully, thank God I don't have to do that. So like I said, I've already gone in with the sandpaper and I've worked these holes a little bit and I did that a few times back and forth. If all you're using the sandpaper, you're gonna have probably a lot of work cut out for you. It's gonna take a lot of back and forth and getting uh, those areas clean and, and widened to accept the, the tuner bushings. And especially in my case, I forgot to put any kind of like paper towel or anything in the holes to kind of block some of the clear or the nitro. And so I, I made it more work for myself. So I should have done that, but I didn't. I did that with my strap project neck, but I did not with this one. So anyway, one of the other methods I employed was actually using one of these files and uh, taking taking one of the edges. This is not flat on either side. It's sort of a, I guess you call it an oval shape. And I would just take it and go downwards like this to kind of, again, get rid of some of those, any kind of nitro that would be on the edge that could cause you know it to propagate and get bigger so you know you got to be careful with this you don't want to go back and forth necessarily and you don't want to put holes in your headstock maybe you do if it's a relic well i shouldn't say holes but little dings and dents but anyway just kind of going like this around the hole and helping to widen it a little bit now i don't have necessarily proof that this works but it seemed to help out in my case and i've already done it a little bit so i'm not not getting a lot of necessarily results as i'm doing it right here so like i said you know i would i would use the sandpaper first make sure you really get cleared out around the top and then you can go in with your reamer and kind of uh, go at it a little bit now i've seen when i saw the Stuart mcdonald guys do this they had a pretty large reamer and the same with the smb stress fest guy his reamer was a bit larger than this one and probably didn't require as much pressing down as I'm having to do with this one. Um, so like I said, I've already put the bushings in here. I've already cleared these out a pretty good bit and the ferrules don't just go in there super easily. You do have to apply some stress and I'll show you um, the method that I use to do that with. But again, just widening them up and making them ready to accept those bushings is what I'm doing here. Okay, so my method of getting the bushings or ferrules into the holes is not probably the most professional way to do it. In my previous video, and yes, I already have done a video about this, but I figure another one wouldn't hurt too bad just to see it done if you're a little bit uh, stressed or anxious about doing something like this. It is a little bit of a, a stressful thing to do because you don't want to crack your headstock. You don't want to dent it up or you know overexert pressure and just you know do something stupid you don't want to do that so you want to exercise caution when you do this but yeah my last video i used just a pair of normal pliers with some cardboard to protect the ferrule and the headstock but a normal set of pliers are probably not the greatest for doing this since then even in my cheapness i've gotten a set of channel lock pliers so these are a little bit better in that you can sort of get the span of the headstock in there and whatever protective material you're using and you can sort of sandwich it in there and get the leverage you need without um, risking marring up the headstock. So what I've got here is just a, a block of wood. It's one of my kids, you know, toy blocks. So I'm putting this on the back of the headstock to protect it. And then for the ferrule, now these are relic, so I'm not super worried about you know, doing any kind of damage to them. But what I'm using is just a pick, right? Just a piece of plastic. You could use any, anything like a credit card or something like that or cardboard or, you know, what have you. And so you want to get those to where they're ready to crunch down, of course, protecting your headstock. And then when you know you're in a good position and you can kind of test it, making sure nothing slips, you can apply the proper pressure and get that seated down.
So as you can see, it's gone down pretty good. Hopefully you can see that. It's not seated all the way yet, so I'll do that whenever I'm ready. But that is the method to employ, and you can see the back there, nothing's been damaged. Now, well, I say that, there's a little bit of chipping out around the back, and that is again because there was a buildup of lacquer on there. And so when this block presses down flush with the rest of the headstock, it compresses that little bit of, of lacquer. Now, of course, you'll have, you're gonna have a tuner covering up a huge area back here. So if that's the case, if you even get pretty bad chip out, uh, you're not gonna have to really worry about it. But that is the way I'm doing it, and I'm gonna continue that method. Hopefully that helps you get an idea of a way you can do it without a lot of fancy tools. I believe, you know, a luthier supply place like Stuart McDonald, I think they have a, a nice tool that you can do it with that makes it easier and maybe less scary, but I think it's probably pretty expensive like all their stuff is. Uh, not, you know, to bash them or anything, they have good stuff, but it can be pretty pricey, especially if you're kind of a, DIY person or just a hobbyist, you're not working on a lot of guitars, doing things like this, you know, not very often. Uh, it's nice to be able to do it with tools that you might have around the house. And by the way, once you get these holes big enough, you know, you can use other means without, you know, clamping them down necessarily. For example, I can put one of these in here the way I've got the holes now and sort of just push it in with, you know, hand pressure and then take something like this block and apply, you know, not a huge amount of force, but and get it down in there pretty good. I say that, I, this one went in way easier with this block, but you get the idea. It's kind of whatever means necessary that you have to do to, to put it in without, of course, damaging anything. All right, at this point, I'm just loosely putting the tuners in to their correct spots. As you can see, none of them are installed yet at this point. So there's really not a wrong way to do it other than you have to get these sort of pointy pieces on the ends. And of course with the Gibson, a three on a side, it's a little different, but, but we are doing a fender headstock. So in my last video with the Strat, I had this ginormous level and that was my straight edge, which made it pretty awkward. Thankfully, I now have a lot better straight edge. Uh, these, you know, you can probably get from, again, a luthier store and they can be kind of expensive, but maybe you can find one at Harbor Freight. I actually just found this at work one day and no one claimed it, so I brought it home and it's a nice straight edge and it helps for like setting up, you know, um, string height and things like that too. So it's a pretty good tool to have and to be handy. So I'm gonna put this straight edge back here to sort of line these tuners up. Now, if you have a nice headstock, you don't want any kind of scratches on it, you could put some painter's tape or something down so that you're not risking doing any kind of scratching. I'm not too worried about it because I have a relic headstock. You know, I don't want any kind of big gouges in it necessarily, but and of course you want to support the neck to where the tuners aren't you know, hitting your work area because they're just gonna pop up if you do that. So you just wanna you know, get these as straight as you can. There is a little lip on these, so you can use that as a guide. You don't wanna push them over to where they're like cocked. You know, you want them seated flat on the headstock, but you just wanna use your your straight edge as a guide to get them straight. Now I have seen people clamp down on the, the ruler or the straight edge to make sure it doesn't move, but I don't really feel like it's gonna move too much on me. And what I'm gonna do is take a Sharpie, a, a fine point Sharpie, and just mark my holes. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm gonna take them off and I'll have the proper locations for my drill bit to drill the holes for the screws. Okay, I got my marks now for where I want my holes. I'm just gonna go in, I've got a 564 drill bit. That seemed to work pretty good with my strat. So I'm gonna just go and sort of uh, indent these places so I get a really good uh, starting point right in the middle of the marks. And that'll uh, again, give me a good guidance. Well, I thought I could take a shortcut with my drill bit, but in reality, you should probably use something sharper. So I have a screw now. I'm gonna get a better indentation.
I've got a piece of tape on my drill bit here. It's sort of a depth stop guide, so you can see there, hopefully. So I just want to make sure that I don't go any further than I need to into the headstock and damage anything. Okay, so here we go. Okay, all the holes are drilled now. Uh, these screws for the tuners are notorious for getting the heads stripped off or sheared off if you uh, you know use too much force. So it's always good to use some wax. Got my wife's candle here. Just gonna put some wax on the screw, and I'm gonna you know just try to insert them now without the tuners on there, just to make sure that there's no problems or issues. You want to make sure that you get the right screwdriver. Um, you don't want to strip the screw or anything like that either. Okay, so that looks like it went in pretty well. I'm just going to repeat that with the rest of these. Make sure that the screw goes in with no problems before I actually put the tuners on. So all the screws went in successfully. Now I'm going to install the tuners. All right, tuners are in, tuners are straight. I'm a happy camper. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I know there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube for you to watch. So thanks for taking the time to watch this one. You know, do what everybody says, like, subscribe, and all that. Click the bell for notifications. I appreciate it and hope to see you again soon.